Hello, I'm Terry Morgan, Superintendent of Hardin County Schools. Wanted to take the opportunity to meet with you today to let you know of the hard work and planning that has gone into beginning the 2021 school year. I think it's important to know that no matter which model we go with, your children are going to be cared for, they are going to be educated, and they are going to be fed throughout this entire process. So with that, let's begin. One of the places that I would suggest that you go for factual information is the Hardin County Schools website. We have our reopening document and that will answer many of your questions. I realize it looks like a long read, but if you're interested in our policy on mask, you click on mask. If you're interested in our cleaning procedures, you click on cleaning. So you do not have to go through the entire document. The second place I would encourage you to go if you're looking for health information is the Lincoln Trail Health Department. This is our community. It is six counties and it gives you the actual COVID numbers for our county as well as our surrounding counties. This is important to note that we are not in the same category as Jefferson County because we don't uh, answer to the same health department as Jefferson County. All of the cases that are reported end up being reported to the Lincoln Trail Health Department. So this is where we are finding our factual information. We also work with Hardin Memorial Health very closely to see what they are finding at the hospitals. How many students are coming in? How many young children are coming in? How many elderly? How many are hospitalized? What is the average stay? All of that, again, can be found on the Lincoln Trail Health Department. But again, we are in contact with Hardin Memorial Hospital so that we have the factual information for our community. It is important for you to know that in Hardin County, we have options for education. One is our in-person instruction. This is, of course, the one that we want to go with. This is the one we know will give us the biggest bang for our buck. We have students in front of teachers. Uh, they are in a safe environment. They have a consistent schedule. And I believe parents, that is one thing you've said, please get my kids on a routine so that they don't think they need to stay up to one or two o'clock in the morning. If they had to get up early, they would maybe quit doing that. And so uh, we are aware that in-person instruction is best. Our teachers are incredibly excited to have your students back and they have worked incredibly hard to prepare to return to school safely. The second option we have is the Online Learning Academy. I think it's important for parents to know this academy was set up for students who have med maybe some medical conditions that would require them not to be in a school setting. It may be asthma, it may be an immune deficiency, it may be that they are going through cancer treatments or something like that. Of course, you also have to take into consideration your home situation. If children are coming home to elderly grandparents or a family member who is compromised with an immune system due to chemotherapy or something like that, then we would encourage those students to be part of the Online Learning Academy. This is not necessarily going to be a teacher from your child's home school. This is going to be a group of hardworking, dedicated teachers from throughout the county. So an English teacher from East Harden Middle School may be the online English teacher. You may have a social studies teacher from North Middle School. If you're at an elementary school, you may have Miss Scott from uh, Cecilia Valley Elementary. They are all great teachers, but it will not be that teacher that you recognize when you walk through your doors of your school building. So again, that option is there for the students who have a concern about health health or the health of those at home. If we have the need to go with NTI, it's a safe way in the event that the health situation requires us not to be an in-person, but this continues your child with their teachers. Uh, so your homeroom teacher at middle school would continue to be your homeroom teacher on the, on, uh, with NTI. So it's really important for those connections to continue. 
The other thing I need you to know is if we go NTI, we will continue to provide lunches to our students uh, each and every day. What that looks like at this point may be that you will go to each child's individual school. I do know there will be more accountability this time. Uh, we do have to apply for funding on that, and that funding uh, has to be approved for us to be able to continue that. But we are dedicated to making that happen for each and every one of our students. We know that is an important resource for our families. One of the things I want to inform you about is the difference between NTI last year and what we're referring to as the new NTI. This will be a much more structured program. Students will be asked to get online, meet with their teacher first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock. Teacher is going to look at all those smiling faces, albeit a little bit sleepy, uh, but there is going to be that consistency of lessons throughout the day. We really want to make the connection with our students. We know that is the best practice if we can't be an in-person so that they are having that consistency and something they can rely on. Each and every day you will expect that your te child's teacher will be providing math instruction, reading instruction, and then other content instructions such as science, social studies, and writing. But those lessons will be happening on a daily basis in a timely manner. So if they are doing reading from 9 to 10 on Monday, they're going to do reading from 9 to 10 on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, throughout the week. So it is important for our parents to know there is going to be greater accountability. There is going to be greater expectation. There is going to be greater consistency with our non-traditional uh, instruction. Our teachers have worked hard. I think you're going to see a lot more technology embedded. They can do uh, group lessons with those students. There will be small group instruction so it may be that a student is online from 9 to 10 and then the teacher invites a smaller group to work with uh, to meet their individual needs from 9 to 9 30 and let the students uh, get back on at that time please do not think they are going to be in front of a screen for seven hours a day that is not the intent the intent is the teacher will do a lesson, give an assignment or some research or independent work for those students to do, and then give them a time to come back on. We are trying to limit the time that we have students on screen by giving them the independent work. However, the teacher would be available in case they have questions or concerns. The other part of NTI is in the evening, our teachers will be available Monday through Thursday for a certain period of time to answer your questions. We recognize there are many working parents who will have um, need access later in the evening. However, I do want to let you know for our teachers' mental well-being, we will also have set office hours. It is important that you look at each teacher's individual's office hours so that you can contact them during that time. If you are connecting with them at one o'clock in the morning via email because that's convenient to you, please be respectful to know they may not be able to answer that until their planning time the next day. So again, that communication is very important and those teachers with NTI will be uh, answering those questions for you in a timely manner. It just may not be in the middle of the night that they have the opportunity to answer those questions. The other thing I know many parents have a question about is what if my child is in child care during the day uh, and they are supposed to be on NTI? A couple of things. First off, we will be having a meeting with child care workers. We will be offering training sessions of how they can help with the NTI, how they can help the students get online in hopes that they can do NTI during the day so in the evening you can have quality family time. However, as the parent, it is your responsibility to make sure that's completed, but there will be teachers in the evening uh, during their office times to assist with that. So if your child is in child care, I encourage you to ask them, did you attend? And they can certainly connect with us as well. We have um, Brandy New, who is our innovation specialist. She will be able to do some trainings. We have tons of videos out there. So in hopes that a multitude of people can assist us with helping our students complete the work and complete the work successfully. 
One other option I would like for you to consider uh, or to know about is that our teachers will be recording the lessons, uh, making sure that we don't have students in there. Uh, for your students to be able to see at later hours, you will need to work with your teacher and let them know uh, the time that you will need those so that your teacher can make sure your student can do those lessons in a time that is more convenient for you. Please understand in kindergarten, first and second, and preschool that we know that those students should not be on the screen uh, as much as is acceptable for an older student. So parents of preschool K1 and 2, please know there are going to be some papers uh, that your students will be doing. There will be some paperwork sent to your home or that you can pick up at school so that you can do those activities at home. This is a time that you can and practice that printing of uh, how to form the letters correctly, how to hold their pencil, uh, how to color, learn their um, different colors at preschool level. So there is a lot that you can do with them at home that is not going to be screen time. Along with that, we would recommend that you limit the screen time they have in the evening. Send them outside to play. Hopefully uh, the weather will continue to work with us uh, to give them that outside that they uh, drastically need during these difficult times. One thing I would like to inform you about is the difference between NTI and OLA. NTI is if we have an emergency shutdown or a medical catastrophe, much like a pandemic, and we need to go from in-person instruction to online instruction. Again, that is where your child will continue to have the same teacher. OLA is consistent. Uh, it makes no difference if we're in school, not in school. Those students will continue with the Online Learning Academy. This is not for emergency situations. The OLA Academy will be there uh, each trimester from beginning to end or each quarter from beginning to end. So even if we're in school, not in school, the OLA Academy will remain the same. Uh, but again, I want to stress that this is a Hardin County Schools Learning Academy, and so it may not be the teachers that your students are familiar with uh, when they walk through the doors of the school. NTI will have the consistent teacher uh, from what they have in the classroom uh, when they walk through the doors, and then they will see that same face online uh, providing instruction uh, throughout the NTI time that we are uh, having to do the non-traditional instruction. One other item uh, that has been interesting, uh, a lot of parents are saying, I've been told uh, or I've heard through the grapevine that our kids are going to be eating on the floor. That is not the case. We will have a desk set up in the cafeteria to allow for social distancing. We will have desks separated in the classrooms to allow, um, allow for social distancing because during that lunchtime, it really is important. Of course, students can't wear masks, so it's important that we do have that social distancing and we do have that spacing uh, during that time. Now, with that being said, there are times during the day our students will be going uh, for physical education. They will be going into the gym, and as you know, if you're going to do a sit-up, you're going to be on the floor. Uh, so there will be times uh, that students do physical activity or that we provide mask breaks uh, when social distancing has not been allowed in the classrooms for an extended period of time, then we will be taking kids to the gym, separate them by the six feet, let them take their mask off uh, so that they have a little bit of social time, uh, but they have that social distancing and they will be sitting on the floors and you see that all the times if you ever visit an elementary, middle or high school. Uh, so those things will be happening, it just won't be while they're having lunch. I know there are a lot of questions that I have not been able to answer today. I think it's important for you to know when it comes to ban and course, those of course uh, are difficult to determine uh, how often they will happen, when they will happen, but our teachers who work in those professions uh, know the rules and regulations of that and they will act accordingly. Another question we have is if we go NTI, will there continue to be sports? Again, those are unanswered questions. We 
we are looking for guidance from the high, Kentucky High School Athletic Association. And when we have that information, we will certainly share it. Um, I know a lot of people are going, how in the world could you be NTI and still have sports? Um, again, those are different um, governing agencies. And again, we will be working with our local community, our local health department, and our local medical officials uh, to help with, the, with those decisions as well. We know those are important factors for our students, and we do want to continue uh, to motivate them to be a part of something. And again, we will be looking for guidance on that, but there are some unanswered questions. The last thing I want to share is at the top of, of what I've been sharing with our principal, there is no plan that is final. At this point, we are doing the best we can and we are very prepared for the situations we have been presented with. We are prepared to educate our children in uh, multiple ways. We are prepared to feed our children. Uh, we are prepared to have students online. We are prepared to have students in person. Uh, we just ask for your patience and realize that we may have to give you a call and say, hey, things are changing. Uh, we're going to go back to in person. Um, but again, if the situation arises and we need to go with NTI, we will also be able to do that. I just ask that you be prepared for those changes. I know this is a very difficult time. Uh, one final thing I do want to share is we are hiring a counselor to work after hours. So if our families have concerns, um, if your child is feeling some anxiety, this will be a person that you can contact, talk with. They will be able to find you or suggest to you uh, other people who may be able to help. We realize this has been a very difficult time uh, for our families and especially our young students who don't quite understand why all of this is happening. I think a young lady on one of our challenges said it best, this COVID thing just needs to be done. Um, and I agree totally with her. So again, we ask for your patience and uh, we just appreciate the community support that we have had and continue to have throughout the situation. So again, thank you. Mm -hmm.